what, if any, effects that would have on your insurance coverages? I guess by your silence, the answer is no. I think they're probably waiting for an answer from me. I'm writing. Yes, I was just, too. Just, okay. just a second. And you mean which insurance? Liability? What, what, are, you, what are you asking for? Uh, liability is the first one that came yeah, to so, mind. So we've talked about, we've talked with our liability insurance carrier. Mm -hmm. The only thing that's going to go up is the fact that you have a bigger building. Um, outside of that, uh, you're going to have to carry insurance on your buildings until you would, would sell them. No concerns about the fire operation? Not with our insurance, no. Thank you. Um, now, with that said, you're talking, about, you're talking about something completely different. We have our insurance carrier, and then you have the ISO rating. Right. You're, you're probably asking more along the lines of the ISO well, rating. I, my, my, my question was general, but yeah. I, obviously liability yeah, it's, was the it's, first yeah, one it's came the ISO. The, our, liability, or our, our liability doesn't go up by anything. Um, the ISO rating for commercial properties in particular um, it has to be within a mile and a half of where the station is. Um, where the ISO, if it's past a mile and a half from where the station is, that's where an ISO rating would be affected. I think the ISO rating also affects uh, private uh, homeowners as well with their insurance. Most, most private insurance companies no longer take into account the ISO rating. That's, that's what, we've been, that's yeah. what that's we were told. I don't know that for fact, but, but that's what we're told. I remember Mr. Barrett. I remember my days when I was sitting there. Uh, I know the fire chief had advised the council back in those times that the uh, ISO rating did have an effect on homeowners yeah, insurance. They, they did, but would Mr. Barrett, maybe Mr. Barrett question. Uh, all I was going to say is, I mean, I remember that kind of during uh, maybe two or three years ago, some rumor mongering about that ISO, about concerns for fire and all that stuff. And then when we talked about it to our insurance, they said, no, no, that, that's years and years ago that that was a big player in that. So that more or less is just a rumor that that is still fact. So the basic answer then is you know, this move will have no effect on the insurance for both the borough and its citizens. Should reduce our insurance premium. Well, it, it would Eventually. reduce, it, it'll reduce ours once you, once, we, once you go down numbers of buildings. Correct. The mile and a half is, is the ISO marker okay um everything in the borough is a mile within a mile and a half of that building is my understanding okay thank you Um, I noticed tonight uh, it was mentioned briefly that um, you're talking about prohibited. Your name, ma'am? Name and I'm address. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm Lynn Faust. And you want my address? Yes, ma'am. 210 Keystone Avenue in Emmaus. Um, but my Thank husband you. and I also own property on Railroad Street. And my question is, you're talking about prohibited parking. May I ask, are you thinking about total no parking at all on that street or is it going to be a permit parking or what are you looking at at this time you live on it so, you, so you're all the way down you're all the way down there she lives like keystone but yeah. it owns I'll property on railroad right. <coughs> on, on oh, right over here on the right on, over on here railroad. yes so their their discussion their their vote was for the side towards the railroad tracks i'm sorry it was to ban the parking on the side towards the railroad tracks on this side yes well no one parks there anyway right well right. well someone well, has <laughs> well there, there have been patrons of certain businesses that have been parking over there um, and also at the end of the intersection uh, what a is fifth. it fifth. fifth so that's what that ordinance is really okay so you're not talking about the whole block no it's that yeah it's that side of the road okay thank you correct I yeah Mrs. Yes, Gilbert, that's, you're correct okay you're correct. The left hand right. side I wanted to make sure down. I was correct but yeah. that's that was the intent of what we did <laughs> okay all right. And while I'm here, standing up here, I do have a question. There's been a lot of discussion uh, with a lot of the citizens of Emmaus concerning the purchase of the Rodale building. And the main question that I have been hearing is, is this a done deal? No. It's not. So it's still... It's not, it's not, it hasn't been completed. Okay, so it's still being discussed? Uh, they voted to move forward. 
Um, Correct. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's where we are with it is council voted to sign an agreement and move forward. So basically, it is a done deal. You're well, it's not. Forward. I mean, it's, it's, go ahead. We have to agree to the terms of what we're going to sign, and that's where we've been. Mm -hmm. Is that it? But there's nothing that okay. else that can be done to stop it. You're moving forward, and that's, that's. Uh, I can't confirm. That would be the answer. That would be, that would be council voting to move forward, but the inspections haven't been done yet. So we don't have all the information yet. The intent of council is to move forward. Um, once inspections are done, then we will move forward. But that hasn't been done yet. So really, in my eyes and the opinion of most of the residents that have been discussing this, it's a done deal. Go ahead, Mr. Barrett. I, I think that's very accurate. Yeah. Yes. I mean, there's, there are, uh, there's still the what ifs, but I, I, I don't foresee that changing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Did you want to say something, Mr. Lambert? I, I was just going to say, I mean, the only thing that would change is if we find something major in an inspection that we would say, no, we don't want to buy it now. Mm -hmm. But that would be the only thing I could see changing it. Okay. Any other personal appeals? Hearing none, moving on to the borough manager's report. Mr. Pepe. Uh, in your binders, uh, is the significant revenue and expense items for February report. Um, going back to, I think, our last meeting, we talked about 432.200. You see that on there again. That cost is for the cost of rock salt. <coughs> yep. um, it doesn't include any labor. So that's why you're seeing, so you're seeing the, amount, the amount that it is. How are we situated now that we're heading into, obviously, end of you know, March and early um, spring? We're OK <laughs> with supply. The problem the problem's not the quantity of snow. It's Frequency. Frequency of snow. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, for the second year in a row, even though it's a different supplier, the suppliers had trouble keeping up um, with, with demand all the way across the board. I mean, obviously, um, I think Boston and, and their neighbors are probably dominating the salt supply across They're the country. <laughs> um, but uh, we, do have, we do have our supply is in. I mean, we were back ordered probably four loads. Okay. Uh, but they dumped them all off at the same time. So uh, we have not come close <coughs> to running out, thankfully. Um, but we're okay. The cost is up again this year simply because of the, the frequency of which we're, we're salting the roads. And it's always on the weekend. Yeah, it just, yeah. just seems like it snows every Saturday and Sunday. Except for tomorrow night. Except for tomorrow night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be nice. It'll be nice. It'll be nice. <laughs> Any questions for Mr. Pepe? President's business. I do need an executive session this evening related to Mr. Pepe. Personnel. personnel fire, department. fire department personnel uh, with no anticipated action upon our return. We are recessing for executive session at 7.50.